we're in a phase two period. So with the vet, well, with the whole team. And so uh, with phase two, you're allowed to wear helmets and padded shirts, no offense versus defense. Um, and then we had a special teams period. So got a lot of good work in. Um, and again, we'll have two days of this and then, then we'll be able to start doing some offense versus defensive things with shells on. Um, anyways, it was a good practice today. Good to have the guys moving around. It's the second phase of the ramp up period. Um, and the guys, they, again, they, they moved around uh, quick, but again, there were no offense versus defense. All right, time's yours. <coughs> Let's go to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Andy, how you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks, Adam. Good. Hey, was curious about Juan Thornhill. I know he's on PUP, at least for now. Can you give us a sense for how he's doing and when it's reasonable to expect he might be back to practice? Yeah, we'll have to see how, you know, how and when um, that he's there. He is doing well at this time. So we'll just, once we get into that phase where we're moving him around, the, you know, the guys, the trainers are moving him around a little bit more, um, but we'll be able to tell. But he's not ready, obviously, right now. Let's go to Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, good morning, Coach. Good to see you. Hey, yes. Likewise. Hey, Coach, with so many moving pieces on the offensive line, specifically the guard position and, and Lucas Nyang electing to opt out, what are some of the challenges – to fully evaluate what you have there without the benefit of OTAs. And as a follow-up to that, uh, as a follow to Adam's question on the pup list, Rankin's also on there. Um, how is he progressing? Yeah, I'd say the same thing. I mean, they're, they're all making good progress. It's just a matter of when they could come back. So as they ramp them up, the trainers, uh, we'll, we'll see. But uh, neither one ready to go right, right now. Um, and then as far as guys go, you know, I thought Brett did a nice job of bringing a couple of veteran guys. Um, so we've, we've, got, we've got numbers there. We've got some young guys. And we've got, uh, you know, these couple of veteran guys that are added into the mix. So I think we'll be okay uh, number-wise um, as we go forward. And then, listen, Herbie, I mean, we've got, uh, we've got a number of padded practices that we'll be able to evaluate. So... Uh, well, right now, listen, right now they're doing a good job. And then, you know, how Andy does anyways, he rotates everybody and yeah, they all play uh, the different positions inside and outside. So, Go to Matt McMullen. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Coach. Hi, Matt. Um, so you guys had a team meeting last week about voter registration. I'm just curious how proud you are of Patrick and Tyron for really taking a leadership role in all of this. Yeah, well, they had a chance to, you know, talk to the team. And I, I think what's important there is, that uh, you can make a difference. Uh, uh, and that's what, that's what those guys understand. Locally, nationally, um, they can make a difference. So, and, and, um, and so they're, they're, they're going with that. They, as a team, the guys feel that that's an important thing and they've all jumped in and um, are, are working to register and, and go forward. Let's go to Blair Kirkhoff. Go ahead, Blair. Andy, in a... Um... In a normal season, this would be game week, and uh, with with a game on Saturday, I'm just wondering what what are you guys going to do to to simulate games um, in, in the next few weeks? Yeah, well, we'll get them in pads first, and we'll, there's a ramp up portion of that too, where um, we'll we'll keep them in pads short, and then we'll keep building there to our normal two and a half hours. So uh, on the field, uh, which is the CBA, uh, which is in the CBA rules there. So. Um, and then uh, we, we will hit every situation that we can think of. I'm, I'm sure there, there'll be some that pop up that you don't think of. But for the most part, we'll have everything taken care of situationally. And then uh, we'll, we'll roll from there. We, we do some other drills that kind of work into your team type thinking. Uh, but we normally do that, too. It's things you've seen. Let's go to Therese Paler. Go ahead, Therese. Hey, Coach. How are you doing today? Hey, Therese. Hey, um, quick question for you. Um, just wanted to know your thoughts on Patrick purchasing a piece of a ro of the Royals and like what your initial reaction to that was. Yeah, well, I'm proud of him. I, you know how he how he's wired. I mean, he he's all in with the city, and um, I think he expressed that if he already hadn't. He, that's a, that's been uh, that's a a definite sign that that he is. I would say, um, and he loves baseball, so it's a it's a match. Um, I, I joked him, you know, he, he's not, he can't play and do both, but he, he can be a part owner of one and play the other. So his two loves. 
<laughs> Let's go to Darren Smith. Go ahead, Darren. Hey, thank you so much, Coach, and uh, good to see you. Nice, uh, I might need to get I might need to get on whatever whatever slim thing you got going on right now. But uh, a couple questions. Obviously, this would have been the start of the NFL season with the Hall of Fame game and the Hall of Fame weekend. Uh, a couple questions. One, who 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 are the top three Chiefs players, former Chiefs players? Do you feel should be in the Hall of Fame? And then also, uh, secondly, you know, some of your some of your players, obviously Chris Jones, Tyreek Hill, they boast about winning five seven championships. I know it's something that you don't usually like, but uh, do you do you mind them doing that, or do you agree with it, or what? What do you think? Yeah, of so, yeah. Um, well, listen, I'm not on the Hall. I don't get to vote, but I. You guys can make make that uh, decision on on the vote. There's so many good players that have been through here that it's hard to pick them out. And and coaches, I mean, uh, there there's some legitimate uh, candidates for for from a coaching standpoint. So, um, as far what was your other part there? The um, the last part of your question there, just. Yes, sir. No, yeah. uh, my question was obviously Tyreek Hill talked about winning seven yeah. championships. Chris Jones yeah. five. Just, do you think it's over the top, or do you? Yeah. So that? listen, I'm. I mean, you guys know how I how I roll with that. I'm not. I'm not big on it, but um, on the other hand, I'm, I appreciate their confidence. But now it's time to work. So you put all that aside, and um, you, you got to grind down and, and get going. And, and so they're they've been willing to do that, and I think they'll continue to do that. Um, that's the way they're they're wired there. But. Um, you know, it's a long off season with a lot of people asking a lot of questions. So things happen, and and uh, but we move on. And and like I said, you got to go through this process. Let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Good morning, Coach. Thanks for taking some time. As always, I, I was just curious. Um, we, we're getting Sammy Watkins for the first time uh, in a while, and this off season there was that stuff where he would maybe desire a bigger role in the offense and so on and so forth. And I just was curious. What were your conversations like, and what are your expectations maybe for Watkins here as you guys enter? I believe it's the third year now with him. Yeah, I'm a big Sammy Watkins fan. So I, I think he's a heck of a football player and really helps us make this thing go offensively. So um, uh, I, I don't worry about all that. I'd hope he'd want the ball more. I mean, that's, a, that's what great players want. And so um, that, do, that doesn't bother me that he, that he said that. I'm glad he's back here, and he'll have, he'll have opportunities for sure. Let's go to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Andy. Good to see you. Um, I have a, a, a question that I don't know how much you guys have tried to go through yet because everything is obviously so new and fluid. But because this is a unique situation, has it sort of given maybe you and the rest of the coaching staff uh, sort of new ideas that you want to attempt to address in these practices? Because obviously – um, you know, you have a limited amount of time, but is there something new that you want to do from a practice standpoint that maybe you would not do in a traditional training camp in St. Joseph based on obviously having a lot of the guys already in the system and going in uh, to returning on the team? Yeah, well, we're going back. We're, we've obviously done our off-season studies. We were able to give the players that over Zoom, and, and now we're able to work on those things. And then any additions that we put in, we're able to work on those and – well, you know, the one nice thing about having it slowed down a little bit is that you're able to teach. You can walk through it. Now we're able to run through it. And then eventually we'll get into pads. And there's no lull in the action. There hasn't been that month off where guys have put it aside and then they come back and they're, they're right into the mix. So um, I, I look at that for right now as a, as a positive thing. I, you know, you'd, everybody would love to have the off season, but that's not what it is. So the positive is that we're getting all that – worked in the guys have been so receptive you can tell that they paid attention on the zoom which can be tough you know when you're at home and some of these guys have children so you got you got the little ones running around and kind of juggling that but um they, they their retention has been great and they've been working hard so we appreciate that all right guys we have time for a couple more let's go sam and then finish with matt derrick go ahead sam yeah hey andy good to see you uh, Thank you sam. We talk a lot about sort of the process and how this is different than than a normal year. But uh, I'm, I'm curious, without being able to be in pads yet, what is missing? Like, where are you guys behind? Um, and I know everybody's in the same boat, right? But where are you guys behind compared to a normal year? And how do you how do you address that? Well, because they they gave us a couple extra practices and pads, we're we're going to be okay. So we've got four practices here without pads on, and 
uh, we should be okay. We should be able to cover all the situations that we normally cover, which is important in this day and age of football. So situational football because of margin between wins and losses is, uh, is very important. So we're focusing in on that, making sure we get that taken care of at the same time, get the guys in football condition where they can uh, sustain four quarters, you know, but I, we're, you know, you're probably behind by reps that you've had in the off season, but other than that, uh, we should be able to catch up on some of that. Let's go to Matt Derrick to finish it out. Go ahead, Matt. Hey coach, thanks for your time as always. But, um, you know, we've all seen Patrick develop on the field, but I'm curious about him in the film room and the way he goes about scouting and what you've seen from him in developing that skill, you know, over the last three years. Yeah, well, this has been a great off season for that, uh, where we could go team by team and look at the different ways that they're trying to work against you, take things out from the year before when you had an opportunity to play and, and look at those different looks that teams are giving you. I thought that that review process um, where you couldn't do anything else but kind of do that um, what was beneficial to him. And you know how he's wired. I mean, he focuses in on things and uh, you give him a task and he digs in on it and, and works through it. So I, I think that helped him. Uh, again, every we've got great defensive minds in this league. So these guys are putting together um, these unique looks for him and he's able to look through that as it's slowed down here a little bit with the off season and power through it. At the same time, he knows he's going to get some more new looks, um, but that's kind of how you build your quarterback resume as you go. It takes a couple, three, four years there, you know, to, to get everything down and, and then you're rolling. 